Okay, well, let me introduce you guys to the model of the human brain here. And um, the brain is divided up to different sections. Right now, we're looking at a lateral section of the brain. This is uh, inferior. This is superior. Here's frontal. As you can tell, this brain is one of those organs that looks very different depending on what section or what direction you're looking at it from. So if we look at it here, you can tell that the brain is divided into two halves. We've got a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere with a big fissure running down the center and connecting the two. Now the next thing about the brain is the he uh, parts of the cerebrum, okay? Parts of the cerebrum are actually named after the bones that they're sitting under. So this part here, this is the front part. When we're in the head, remember, we use the term rostral. So this part lays under the frontal bone, so it's called the frontal lobe. The part that lies under the parietal bone is the parietal lobe. The part that lies under the temporal bone is the temporal lobe. And the part that lies under the occipital lobe is the, sorry, the occipital bone is the occipital lobe. And because we're divided into a right and left side, we have those structures on either side. Now, if I go ahead and I use half the brain, just to make life a little bit easier, you can see that there's a back lobe in this brain here, again, a left and a right side, that kind of looks a bit like a ball of yarn, and this is called the cerebellum. So if we take a look at the cut surface of the brain, you can see over here, you can see the cut surface of your frontal hemisphere, or frontal lobe, I should say. In the center, your parietal lobe. In the back, your occipital lobe. Now, things that you can only see on the sagittal or mid-sagittal section like we have here, this structure here is the uh, corpus callosum. This is the white matter found in the brain, and it's where the right and left sides of the brain connect to each other. This structure over here in the real brain would actually be a space, and this is the lateral ventricle, and it would be filled with cerebral spinal fluid. This area over here is the fornix. Oh, I missed an area. This rather large structure right here on the interior is referred to as the cingulate gyri, cingulate with a C, C-I-N-G-U-L-A-T-E. Remember, review here, a gyrus is a fold, a convolution in the brain, a sulcus is a shallow groove, okay? So plural would be gyri, and these gyri exist to increase surface area. And the sulci, plural of sulcus, exist because the gyri exist. And again, increase surface area, make more room for those neurons we need for deep thinking. All right, going back to our cut surface here, uh, once we get under the level of the fornix, we're actually into the part of the brain called the thalamus. And the thalamus, to me, always kind of looked a little bit like the shell of a turtle, like a sea turtle. And uh, let me get a little close up for you. There we go. So our thalamus would be over here. The head of the turtle right over here is actually the pineal gland. This part of the turtle always reminded me of the rear flipper. This is the hypothalamus, meaning under the thalamus. And then finally, the turtle's laying an egg. And our egg, you can see over here, is the pituitary gland hanging down on its stalk. Okay. Uh, this area here, this is the cut surface of the cerebellum. It looks like very beautiful, almost like a tree on the inside. Maybe that's why people have such references to the tree of life. Um, if I come back over here, here's the midbrain, this area right over here. We've got the pons right over here. The medulla oblongata right over here. And then finally, flowing into the uh, 
cut surface of the spinal cord right over here. And remember, it's the spinal cord which is going to exit through the foramen magnum in the back of the skull. All right. And there you have the major portions of the model of the brain.